Hi guys, so today I am bringing you my September, it's not September, I am bringing you my October wrap up. I managed to read seven books in the month of October but for some reason I feel like I didn't read that much, it's kind of confusing. I do have a written version of my wrap up over on my blog where you can see what blog posts I wrote and random updates to do with my life in general so if you want to check that out I will leave a link down in the description bar below. But without further ado, let's get on with the wrap-up. Just a warning beforehand, quite a few of these books were sent to me for review because I was trying to catch up with a lot that I had. They all turned up at the same time and this was basically the last stint of me trying to catch up with them all. So the first book I read was Like a Dream by Sheena James and when I say read, I didn't actually finish reading it. I did not get along with this book at all and I kind of felt bad for not finishing it because uh, it was sent to me for review but I read to 100 pages which is a third of the book. It just reminded me of an English essay. Like, I did debate with this for a very long time about whether I should finish it or not because like I said it was sent to me for review but if it was my own book I wouldn't have finished it anyway so I can't treat the books that I'm sent for review any differently because then it wouldn't be honest. So fortunately this one was a miss from me. The second book I read was Dark Waters by Tracy Abreu. This was also sent to me for review and again, I didn't get along with it too much. It was enjoyable and it was a really quick read because it's only 200 pages or so. But the first book kind of went very similar to this one in the way that it was enjoyable, quick to read, but I couldn't really take it seriously for some reason. The relationship in this especially I could not get on board with because it just moves so quickly. I, I can't. I would have liked to see more detail in response to the ending of the previous book because this huge event happens. If there were more little details about how the world in this handled it, I feel like that would have made it so much better. I gave this book a 2.5 out of 5 stars. The third book I read was The Thousandth Floor by Catherine McGee. Again, I was sent this for review, but by Social Book Co, which is a book review program. I will leave a description to Social Book Co down in the box below, along with a link so that you can check it out for yourselves. This book was probably the first one I actually enjoyed this month, purely because it's not like anything I've read before. Now, a lot of people compared this to Gossip Girl, Pretty Little Liars, things like that. I don't watch TV that often, so I can't actually compare them to that. But I kind of get that feel from it. From what I've heard, I would agree that it's like Gossip Girl. This is basically like a casual sci-fi mixed with drama. And I say casual sci-fi because it's sci-fi but not overloading with technology. It's the sort of technology we've all heard of before, like hovercrafts and touchscreens and things like that. So it doesn't take too much to understand, which is always good for me because I'm not good with technology, even nowadays. Never mind. 5,000 years in the future. <laughs> this it sort of feels like a guilty pleasure read for me, just because it's lots of rich kid drama, but I can't help but enjoy it. It's just that much goes on, you just have to keep reading. And it's a quick read, so yeah. I'm pretty sure I rated this 4 out of 5 stars. This is the last book that I read for review this month, and this is called Just Juliet by Charlotte Reagan. This one was very much a don't judge a book by its cover case because I hate this cover. I don't know why, I, but I absolutely love the book. <laughs> now, I'm not one that would read romance stories because I just, I don't deal with love stories. Well, the cover even says first in spoon. I don't spoon, I cringe away and hiss. I don't deal with love stories that well. I just find them all cringy, but this one, Oh, it's just so cute. I think I accepted this to review because I wanted more diversity and, and as you can tell by the cover, this is a diverse book. But the amount of diversity in it, like I knew it was about girl-girl couple before I started reading it, but there's so much diversity in this book, but it's so casual that it's just normal. It's not made a big deal out of, which I love. Definitely got that sort of, if you're not harming anybody, then you do you that's completely fine, there's nothing strange. And I love that message. It's just a genuinely happy book. Even when they do have problems, they are genuinely happy people. So it's just nice to see that for a change. I rate this book 4.5 out 
5 out of 5. The fifth book I read was The Liar Tree by Frances Harding. I had no idea what to expect with this book. I'd heard so much about it just from the hype from when it won the Costa Book of the Year award. Apart from that, I hadn't heard much about it. One of my friends a while ago read it and she told me it was quite a dark story and for some reason that translated to gothic in my mind. Now it's not gothic at all, but it is definitely dark in the way of murder and lies. If I looked at the genre beforehand I would have realised that because it is classed as a mystery. I didn't know that. But I still really enjoyed this book. I'm not very good at guessing plots to mysteries, I have no idea what's going to happen so I just don't even try at the best of times. So with this one, when the whole mystery thing happened, I was just suspecting everybody. Don't trust anybody, who needs trust? You don't in this book. My favourite thing in this book without a doubt was the main character, Faith. She was, she was feisty, but in a quite a subtle way. That doesn't really make sense because feisty people tend to be like in your face feisty, but let me explain. <laughs> this is set in the Victorian times, which means that Faith is constantly told that she can't be clever. But that's just the role of men. They are the ones that should be clever. The women just sit around looking pretty. Just so frustrating to read about, but you know, it's a good thing because of accuracy. So because Faith is actually interested in natural sciences, she is constantly annoyed with being told that she can't take any part in science and that her word will not be listened to. She kind of gets around that. But she sort of manipulates the situation so that people have to believe her. The only thing that I didn't like about her was that I couldn't imagine her as the age that it said she was. I'm pretty sure the book said that she's 14 but for some reason I imagined her being older than that. I don't know, I kind of imagined her the wrong age but it's not too much of an issue. I rated this book 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book is Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. This one I'll be reading throughout the month because I am part of the Ostentatious Book Club and basically we read a Jane Austen book every single month. This month was Northanger Abbey. I absolutely adore this book so much more than I thought I would. It wasn't that I didn't expect to not like it, I just like it so much more than I was expecting. <laughs> This one follows a girl called Catherine. Like with most Victorian classics, it's just the story of her going through life. <laughs> but I relate to Catherine so much, it's actually kind of scary. When she was younger, she used to be really outdoorsy, much rather go outside and get muddy instead. I was like that when I was younger, I was really outdoorsy. And then as she grows up, she starts liking books more. I don't know, it's just something about her that I really relate to. As I was reading it, I would have the exact same reactions to every situation as Catherine would. So that's probably why I like this book so much. This is definitely on par with Pride and Prejudice for me, 4.5 out of 5 stars. And the final book I read in October was The Dead House by Dawn Kirtigich. This is a reread for me. I hosted a little read along just with a few friends because I absolutely love this book. It's one of my favourites. Dawn Kirtigich is one of my favourite authors and it was about time I reread it. I'm just a permanent advertiser for Don Kirk's Kitch books because I absolutely adore them and not enough people has read them, so try a book guys, try one of her books. But the interesting thing about this book is that it's formatted differently. It's basically presented as a case file for when a boarding school burned down. The case is revisited and this is the case file. So it's told in diary entries, emails, there's newspaper clippings, there is all sorts in this book. That is what I love about it the most. All the way through there's a paranormal versus psychological aspect to it and as you're reading the case file you sort of have to decide for yourself whether you believe the paranormal side to it or the psychological side. That is just really interesting to me because I can never decide which one I want to believe. Just like last time I rated this book 5 out of 5 stars. So those are all the books that I read in October. Quite a, quite a mixed month for reading. I kind of hope that November's a little bit better. Like I said at the start of the video, I do have a longer written version of this on my blog, so again, the link will be in the box below, and that is all for this wrap up. There's also full reviews for every single book that I've just mentioned on my blog, so I will link all of those down in the box below. Let me know how many books you guys read in the month of October, which one was your favourite, if you have any recommendations for me, and do let me know in the comments. I was going to do a November TBR but I never stick to any TBRs that I make, it's just 
it doesn't work for me. Please do like this video and subscribe. Check out all the links in the down box below. Hope you have a lovely day and I shall see you next time. Bye!